Hello, welcome to Farm Talk Friday. It is Friday, December something. 10th, 10th. Is it the 10th? I don't know. Oh man, it is the 10th. Wow. Friday, December 10th, 2021. Uh, my name is Ken Jordan. This is my beautiful wife, Giovanna. And we're here at our little farm, the Green Wave. House farm. Rancho Passion. Rancho Passion. Which is part of Rancho Delicio, so. Yes. But, um, that's a whole story that we've tried to explain before, and it's not really that important, actually. So. No. <laughs> we're going to move on. We're going to move on to good stuff. Yeah, so today, this morning, I saw what I think was a golden Oriole. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is that so, a bird? Yes, and they, they're only here during this season, and uh, not super rare you know I've seen them before but it's always a complete delight when I do see them they're they're beautiful and they have like a, a deep golden belly and black I don't know um, head feature plumage anyway that was that was exciting for me super exciting yeah do you have updates because I have my list yeah I have <laughs> updates okay uh, my brother Tony and uh, his son Anthony have been here for a week. Also, Anthony's girlfriend and family mm -hmm. have been here. So I've been uh, trying to entertain them here in Costa Rica, here in our hometown. And we're having a blast. Haven't done too much farm activities in the last week, but that's okay. Yeah, I guess for Ken, I've still been trying to, I mean, we do things. We're taking care of the chickens all the time. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, like observation is something that you need to do for the permaculture slash any kind of farm lifestyle. So, you know, walking the land and paying attention to what's happening. So on that note, uh, we thought the cashew trees had like a disease like farm wide and uh, we were very concerned and they seem to be coming back so that's good so what happened is here in Costa Rica there's actually like a high prevalence of pesticides it's one of the um, countries aside from it having like green energy sources uh, like we import the most pesticides per capita above China <laughs> Well, uh, yes, one of the very few drawbacks of living in Costa Rica, uh, well, we're second to China, but we're number one in the world in pesticides consumed. No, we're, yeah, we're above China. Yeah, we're above China, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, that's, so my, that's, mm -hmm. that's bad. That is bad. But it's not too many other bad things here. No, but... Um, as you would have it, our neighbors across the street from our entire eco-village spray. And uh, this is something that we're trying to talk to our neighbors about because obviously, you know, like all our hard work, if we have neighbors spraying, um, it's not like spraying directly onto our land, but it's still going to contaminate potentially the water supply. And, uh, you know, and we actually thought, not done yet, um, that perhaps, the problem with the cashew trees had something to do with a recent spraying several months ago. And um, so a lot of us were really concerned and we're like, we need to pay attention to this. And I think maybe during rainy season, the cashew trees just might go through this cycle or maybe it's just something annual that they go through, but it did look like they were all dying and it was happening about like a week after our neighbors had sprayed. Uh, but we will keep you posted on that. Yeah, and our neighbors aren't spraying because they're evil people. They've, they've been told that these sprays are harmless and good for their crops and, you know, the same crap that everyone's told when buying Roundup and Roundup Ready seeds and all that stuff. But anyway, so we're, we're growing organically here and also we buy organically. Organic food is available here, which is great. Yes. So anyways, I just want to say hi to Hope and Anne. How do they spray with trucks? No, they have, uh, they actually just have a guy out and sadly they're usually not protected. Like they could have protective equipment and they should, but they don't. 
But uh, I've seen trucks in the area as well. Oh, you have? Yep. Oh, okay. On the, on the big fields. Yeah, it's, it's sad. Um, but anyways, it's still beautiful here and we love it and we're trying to do the right thing here uh, on our piece of property and in the village as well. So do you want to, you're looking like you want to show them. Yeah. Okay. Let's see some stuff we're growing lately. What do you want to do first? This one's really heavy. Ta-da. Look at this thing. I think we've shown... Any, any guesses, Anne <laughs> or Hope? I think we've shown these before that we grow. I mean, like, this is huge. They're big. This is giant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is jicama. Oh. Yeah, Maybe. and this one, this one was in the advertisement for today's Farm Talk Friday. It has a heart. Oh, yeah, this That's so cute. Kind of heart shape. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they're super versatile. You can make them sweet or savory or just fresh on their own and they're just uh, light and delicious. Did you tell me what it was? Jicama. Yeah, the jicama. last was jicama. And they, and um, it's not common here. I think we're the only ones growing it. Yeah. Uh, and then these look like cherry tomatoes, but they're not. They are naranjillas. Naranjillas, which would mean small oranges. Yes, and we don't know how to eat them yet, but they're very seedy. Let me tell you what you do with them. Oh, okay. You cut yes. out this little area, this, just this little thing, cut that off, just probably slice it. And then you like cook them down. Put water in, cook them down. And then what you're left, the liquid you strain out that you're left with, you can make a, like a refreshing drink out of it. Perfect. This is what I've been Sounds told great. today. Well, it's very exciting and uh, we want to thank our neighbor, uh, or neighbors, Catherine and Jim. They are the ones that gave us the Naranjia seeds and we often share seeds with them. And she was growing them, said they were really cute and knew that I had a rainbow alley and, um, and that I might want to put them because they are orange in the orange section of that, so. And, and also, uh, they don't look like this when you first uh, get they, them. They're super fuzzy. Yeah, they're hairy, they're fuzzy hairy. Yeah, so maybe we'll show you a fuzzy one next week. Uh, but talking about Jim and Catherine, they just had a compost workshop yesterday that we were not able to go to because we were entertaining the family, but we sent a representative. And so I wanted to thank Arena, um, who was our representative. She also is um, who I currently have working with Futuro Verde, which is one of the projects that uh, Greenway fiscally sponsors. And so uh, she's gonna give us the notes on that and, um, and also hopefully be able to apply what she learned uh, at the school. So that's exciting. Super exciting. Speaking about the school, I had just gotten back from a whole day of, um, or it seemed like a whole day, going down, getting some things from the beach house, which was just so... Anyways, um, we had two guitars there, and so I just donated them to the school. So that's what I was doing. I just dropped them off. Woohoo! Yeah. Yay! Success. One works. One works, but the other one I think could be used for art. Uh, so I will be telling Halida, who is the art director currently, that she can use that. Maybe it would be... And actually, we have to thank Richard Bishop for the donation. Yes, thank you, Richard Bishop, because those were his sons, I believe. Right? Or his. Henry or, or Richard's, yeah. yes. And the other one sounds really nice, even just strumming it. I have zero guitar skills. I was like, oh, this All is right. nice. So... That is going to the art program at Futuro Verde. Fantastic. So I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Hello, Eric and Clint and Brian. Trying to avoid the the light. the light. Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, the chickens. We should always give a chicken update. We haven't had any new eggs yet, so no. we don't really know what's happening. Uh, the girl, the new hens seem like they're doing good. They're um, sleeping in the box kind of comfortably now. They seem like they've made themselves at home. One of them, Butterscotch, is kind of the outsider. And she has different eyes than her two sisters. The two sisters have light eyes, and then Butterscotch has these really beautiful, like, dark eyes. And um, there's something about, like, just to her 
coloring and like her little crest that kind of, you know, she's not quite like the um, caged killer whale, you know, where it's totally floppy, but I don't know, it, it's not very straight. And she just, she just looks more worried to me. And so I'm, I am a little concerned about her. We're trying to kind of feed her a little bit more. I don't, I just, we have a lot more observation to do with our new, um, our new girls. So we're continuing to try and figure out those systems. And then uh, the roosters, they have their own house. We said that last week. This morning, I realized that there is some sort of mark on the door. So it looks like a pizote or a raccoon has left a scratch mark. I don't know when that appeared, but. Okay, very interesting. Yes. So, I don't know. I wouldn't mess with Rick, personally. Rick, um, yeah. Yeah, Rick caused some terror in me. I, I think that was last week's uh, video where yeah. I, I talked about that, but. <laughs> Anyway, happy Friday, everybody. That is our Farm Talk Friday update. Thanks for watching. See you next week on Farm Talk Friday. Yay.